So Sesra Budeji has already placed the work that has been happening in universal human values. But before I start, I would like to thank uh, Professor Manali uh, for organizing this beautiful seminar. Professor Sahasra Buddheji for his wonderful introduction and Radha Krishnan Pilleji for his uh, education experimenting phase of uh, education that is quite interesting and welcome Milind Dagarwalji uh, to this panel. So we are co-panelists and I would particularly like to thank Subda Joshi ji. Uh, I have met her only once but uh, she is such a wonderful person, it is very difficult to forget. So, uh, and of course Mohan Raoji, uh, thank you for your, you know, framing this whole, whole thing. Uh, I will take a few minutes to uh, express what I wanted to express. And I have added on what uh, Sahasra Buddhaji has mentioned, so I'll uh, mix both of those things. See, if you look at NEP 2020, it is very clear in the aspirations that it is articulating. So on the first page, it is saying education is fundamental for achieving these three things, full human potential, developing an equitable and just society and promoting national development. And then it is giving, you know, all these, uh, how to go about these aspirations. So the education system has to be rooted in the Indian ethos. It has to be value based. It has to include universal human values. It has to develop a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental duties, constitutional values global well-being which includes SDGs. So it is talking about all these things essentially for the well-being of all, which is something which is uh, very nice. I was there in the morning session, uh, listening in to the morning session, uh, such a wonderful session that even the professors from US, uh, he was talking about that I wish I had uh, policy like this in the US also. So it is uh, articulating the aspirations of every human being in a way. And if you look at the aspirations and we, uh, you know, try to consolidate a uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, put, take out the essence of that. At the level of the human being, we want to live with human consciousness, which means that I am living with continuous happiness and prosperity. So this is where I want to reach. And if our education can be, uh, uh, can do this, then it will see these kind of attributes in the students. I won't go into the details of this, but uh, it will go into all of these attributes. It will number one, have a holistic vision of life. And that's what I'll focus on uh, for right now. Such people who have a holistic vision of life will be able to contribute to an equitable and just society. And such a society means that every individual in the society is happy, every family is prosperous, there is fearlessness in the society, and there is mutual fulfillment, coexistence in nature and all existence. So these are all uh, aspirations that are articulated in these words of equitable and just society. And at the level of the nation, we will be able to promote national development only when we are in harmony within, we are in order within, we are not fighting with each other and all that, we are in harmony within. And we are complementary to other nations, we are not in opposition to other nations, we are very complementary to other nations. We are helping them also to become harmonious in themselves and also it be able to contribute to each other rather than being competitors. So that's 
what NEP is expressing. And there was a question about how to go about it. I'll skip this for right now, but we are not talking about do's and don'ts. A lot of effort has been made in education, in particularly in higher education, but also in school education. And you can see the growth so far from the early 80s to today. And AICT stepped in in 2017 and made a huge difference to this whole effort. And Sesra Buddhaji was at the center of this. So there are about 10 courses that have been developed for the students. UHV1, which is an introduction. And somebody asked, how do you uh, help the students to make up their mind that this is something useful for me. So that has to be done. So that is UHV1. They do get a glimpse of the values, but they uh, uh, essentially it's to help them to make up their mind to be receivers, you know, good receivers and then good explorers. UHV2 is a full one semester course for understanding harmony and ethical human conduct. And then there is a minor degree. This has been recently uh, started 2022. It is still under construction, but some of these courses are already in place and some universities are already teaching those courses. For faculty preparation of people, you know, this question always comes up that uh, who will teach these courses? It's nice, it should be in school, it should be here and there, but who will teach these uh, courses? So there are several um, courses for the teachers. There is introductory faculty development programs, UHV1 faculty development programs, UHV2 FDPs. And then after that, there is handholding through weekly meetings. There are 17 weekly meetings every week that take place by uh, the support of AICTE. And then there is a morning session that is independently done for practice and about 300 people are joining that uh, morning session that is from 5.30 to 7.30 a.m. And I'm surprised there are so many people who are joining. And it's very nice to see that. And they are the ones who are able to not only see the words, but they are able to practice, see it directly and then be able to say that, yeah, this makes sense for me. And many of them are taking up the higher level courses and volunteering for the nationwide activities. There are more than 500 volunteers who are giving their time and all these uh, efforts are being made by these group of volunteers. They are all working pro bono. So with the help of AICTE, there is this mandatory three-week student induction program that Sasra Buddhaji was mentioning. It has several modules. It has this uh, nine modules. One module is on universal human values that I just talked about six modules on Indian knowledge system and two skill modules. Then there is a mandatory one semester foundation course that is UHV2 and all this has been placed in the uh, approval process handbook and the minor degree which started in 2022 has all of these courses which are much more detailed than the introductory two courses. And these courses may also be offered as open electives uh, or self-learning courses and they are being placed on the Swayam platform as we go along so that they are accessible to all in large scale till the teachers uh, get prepared. When they are prepared, then they can you know, do this on their own. All of these uh, views, all this has been put together in a a uh, you know, nice implementable framework. It is called holistic value-based education. It has three components. The first component is about the value education part, the universal human values part. And this helps to make a holistic and humane world vision. See, in the morning also it was 
mentioned that we are preparing students for job, but we need to prepare them for life. So that has to be done. And this can give an overview of uh, our life, whatever is relevant for human being, why we are here, who we are, and things like that. With this, when we give examples, case studies, and even courses, on values that have been actually in practice, they can make a huge difference to the student to see that, yes, this is possible. I can do it. My ancestors have done it and I can also do it. So the Indian knowledge system is a very good example of a humane world vision, a holistic hum uh, world vision. So that for our country, that is the best uh, example that we uh, should teach our students and we have so many examples of children having you know these two then when they start learning skills they always think about are these skills nature friendly are they human friendly are they going to help society is it only for me or for others also and they go into practice also and now AICT is, uh, you know, trying to put all these things into different languages. So right now, all this material is being translated into nine Indian languages. And this document has been recently released on 30th of July, re-released, I would say. Uh, it was released originally in 2021, in December, by Cecil Gudeli. But it has been really, really re-released uh, at the Akhil Bharatiya Shiksha Samagam, uh, which was mentioned in the morning also. And this document has been seen by, uh, uh, you know, all those uh, uh, important people in the education. Uh, uh, Shri Dharmendra Padhanji, Professor Sita Ram, Professor Jagdish Kumar, Professor Dinesh uh, Saklani ji. So all of them have taken a look at it and written their messages in this document. And you can download it from the link. I uh, will share that link. So if you look at Sesrabuddhiji's and AICT's uh, continuing involvement, uh, it is very significant. That is, wherever we may be as a society, if we take our education to be holistic, make it holistic and value-based, then we can move to uh, contributing to the fulfillment of the aspirations that have been articulated in uh, NEP 2020. So this is something that uh, Sesra Buddhaji mentioned and now Sita Ramji is taking it forward with you know, a, a great deal of enthusiasm. So uh, this is the addition that I had to make when uh, Sesra Buddhaji mentioned uh, all of this before. So the three components, the first component is universal human values. It is developing a holistic and humane world vision in the child. This used to be part of the family tradition, the societal tradition, and with the waning of the society, uh, looks like you know the teachers have to take on this additional responsibility. So today, if we see this has been adopted by you know many hundred universities or so, more than six thousand colleges, more than three hundred schools in Madhya Pradesh, and more than sixty thousand teachers have been prepared. Uh, with you know the introductory part so far and many of them are volunteers there are more than 500 volunteers i mentioned the content is wholly universal it is applicable to all so values like respect are not limited to any sect any creed or nationality or race or gender it is a universal value. In the morning we mentioned love, uh, compassion, 
empathy. So those are all universal values. So like that, it, the content has to be universal. It also has to be rational, amenable to our reasoning. And it certainly should not be based on do's and don'ts or blind beliefs. The belief won't work anymore because there are so many contrary beliefs even in a, a individuals. So it has to be something that has, uh, is amenable to logical reasoning. It has to be verifiable and it is verifiable that you should be able to verify it logically also and in practice also. Not to be believed just because it is stated somewhere uh, in the course. And it has to lead to harmony. It has to lead to order. It has to enable us to live in peace and harmony within ourselves as well as with others. So that's the kind of content that is there in the universal human values part. Now that can form as a base to understand Indian knowledge system because we have developed our knowledge system, our knowledge traditions, our practices. We have verified and improved it over thousands of years and we are uh, very lucky recipients of it. The whole world is. So as a result, the Indian knowledge system is well grounded. It is founded on well-being of all and it is based on deep understanding of human being as well as of nature and the entire existence. So today if we see, you know, the where we are today if we see, it is a whole lot of mixture of different beliefs, different cultures, uh, traditional cultures, modern cultures and all kinds of things are there. So the problem is that one culture tends to be opposed to the other cultures. They want to show that I am better than others, I did before you and all those kind of things. You know, there is a lot of competition because their basic assumptions and thoughts and actions are different. So they think they are different. But if we really look into it, there are, at the core there are commonalities and there is, the conflict is only at the level of expression. So everybody talks about truth, love, compassion, things like that, you know. So they agree on the core but they may not agree on the uh, expression of it. So with this situation in place, what it is today, uh, it is important to articulate the truth, love and compassion at the core. Articulate it in a manner in which it can be communicated without a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, in simple terms, what people can understand today, what they can verify today. And we have to appreciate the various ways to materialize this, to express this. Different ways may be there, different languages may be there, and they have to be there. So we have to appreciate that. And another third thing which I should have written here is that if we find that there is a gap in my culture or in somebody else's culture, I should become critical and, uh, you know, what I should do is to try to fill that gap, whether it is in my culture or it is in somebody else's culture. Uh, it, we should try to make an effort to fill that gap so that Ultimately, we want to live in harmony with others. So that has to be the approach. If you look at the very fundamental questions, there are you know, only three fundamental questions. One is, who am I? Another question is, what is all this existence? Is it real, not real? What is it? And the third thing is, what is my role in this whole existence? So we have to understand these questions, these uh, answers to these questions. And whatever we don't understand is a source of, uh, you can say, fear for me. I want to know, but I don't know. So I have to understand all of this and live by it. That is, live by truth and compassion. So these questions are there whether I am just the body or I am the consciousness 
or I'm the body plus consciousness or something else? Is there one life or am I continuous? So all these kind of questions are there. And simply uh, uh, another set of questions about the existence is, is it just a material world? Or is there material plus consciousness? Or there is material plus consciousness embedded in space? Or something else? So is, there, is it a chaos or a harmony? Is it going from bad to worse? Or is it becoming better? Or is it constant and stays as a harmony? And all these other things that we see are only temporary, you know, earthquake kind of things. There is a larger harmony. So all these are questions that have to be explored. So if you narrow down the truth, it is in three, uh, I can put it in three words. One is relationship, the other is harmony, and the third is coexistence. And these three are definite, unchanging and universal. So we have to understand these as universal human values. And then when we go to live by it, then this love and compassion is a natural outcome of this understanding. Understanding the existence as it is. So love is the feeling of being related and responsible towards all, all human beings as well as other units in existence. And compassion is the willingness to extend the help un unconditionally with empathy to all. That I feel the, ha the happiness and unhappiness in the other and I am able to not only see that, but I am able to decide what I can do to alleviate that situation. Okay, whether it is in myself or in somebody else that is living by compassion. And then with these two, with the values, with the holistic world vision, with good examples, when we go to learn skills, then we will learn these four types of skills, not just the science, technology and management for, I mean, right now I've written science, technology and management for mutual prosperity. Are we doing that or are we doing it only for my, you know, profit and growth? So, this has to be looked into. So, I won't go into the details of the skills, but skills are not only about getting something, but it is about giving something also. If we don't prepare our children with all these skills, then we will continue to see the kind of uh, thing that is happening. So, if we have holistic value-based education, we will have this understanding of harmony, that is values which are definite, universal and unchanging and they will guide our skills to live in harmony. And that will result in mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. So when we look at understanding harmony, we have to understand harmony at all levels of our being, which includes the human being, the family, the society, as well as nature and existence. And again, living in harmony at all these levels. So skills for living in harmony at all these levels have to be developed. But they have to be guided with a direction. If we see today, the problem is that by and large, I mean I shouldn't belittle the education, but by and large our education is very skill biased. And it needs this, this missing link is the values part and the examples of values part. So right now the skills may be more or less directionless, but the net result that we see in the society today is what is written at the bottom, unhappiness, making others unhappy, deprivation, exploiting and depriving others. So all that is happening today because whether it is from formal or informal means that we educate ourselves, learn about what is right, what is wrong, what to do, what not to do. Wherever we pick this up, whether it is from the family or whether it is from uh, the society, whether it is from school or college, wherever we are picking up all this from, that guides our efforts, all our efforts. 
And today, if you look at yourself, you can find out, you know, what is the situation. But wherever we might be, we would certainly like to be here. We would certainly like to be happy and prosperous. So my last part here is about the industry. <laughs> the session is about industrial values and corporate ethics, but I have spoken more about the content, context rather than about, you know, the specific things. So values means what is our participation in the whole, whether it is in the organization or the society or it is, you know, the nature, all of that, that is our value, how we contribute to that. Ethics is about how we participate, how to fulfill that. Values is about what to do and ethics is about how to go about it. It's not only about restrictions. With right understanding of harmony and right feeling of harmony and with industry making effort for a harmonious society, particularly for prosperity and fearlessness in the society and of course coexistence, that is very important. Okay. The values and ethics will flow naturally in the workplace. You don't have to force them by rules and, you know, by such controls from outside because they will never work. They will work only when these things are internalized. So that's it from my side. Many thanks.